welcome to everyone to this belated episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program, when it gets launched on time, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the origins controversy exclusive to right here on YouTube. Remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, just punch in wazulu.com or genesisweek.com and you will find us. I'm your host, Ian Juby. To celebrate the Year of Darwin, in 2009, the Royal Terrell Museum in Drumheller, Alberta added a new Darwin exhibit. In that exhibit, they quote Darwin lamenting the lack of intermediate fossils found in the fossil record. But just in proportion as this process of extermination of parent forms by new varieties has acted on an enormous scale, so must the number of intermediate varieties which have formerly existed on the earth be truly enormous. Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? A good question indeed. So, 150 years of scientific research and study later, with the anniversary of Darwin's book, Origin of the Species, the Royal Terrell is proud to present to you the numerous intermediate fossils that have been discovered since Darwin's time. All two of them. The famous Canadian fishapod, Tiktaalik, was one, famous because it was supposed to be the predecessor of the foot, until fossil foot prints were found in Poland, allegedly in older rocks than Tiktaalik. Thus, Tiktaalik was promptly hurled out of the evolutionary tree. The other example of an intermediate was Archaeopteryx, allegedly the ancestor of the birds, allegedly 150 million years old, with fully formed feathers. Now, there are some small problems with this alleged evolution of the birds, seeing as how all of the feathered dinosaurs are presented as proof that dinosaurs evolved into birds, until you point out that Archaeopteryx predates them all with fully formed feathers. It's at this point that the Dino to bird theorists concede and claim that the feathered dinosaurs are still evidence of dinosaurs evolving into birds, but they are all evolutionary dead ends, with the fully formed feathers of Archaeopteryx de-evolving into the proto-feathers of the other feathered dinosaurs. Confused yet? You should be. But don't look at me, I'm just reporting. You can read the full fiasco here on my website. But back to Archaeopteryx. Shortly after the Terrell exhibit got set up, a public library of science article came out claiming that the growth rate of Archaeopteryx matched that of a dinosaur and not a bird. Now, interestingly, I'm ignoring the very convincing arguments that Archaeopteryx is actually a fraud. An accusation those like J.D. Mitchell spelled out in tremendous detail on video. So the PLOS article not only added weight to the charge of forgery, it also turfed Archaeopteryx out of the evolutionary tree, as it has nothing to do with bird evolution. As if that wasn't a fatal enough blow, this past week an article came out in Nature magazine detailing the find of another dinosaur that was so similar to Archaeopteryx the scientists re-evaluated Archaeopteryx as a dinosaur, specifically Deinonychosaurus. An acknowledgement of the dilemma and an exciting solution was presented in a new, new scientist article. If Zhu's analysis holds up, it will create quite a headache for taxonomists as Archaeopteryx is used to define the base of the birds. One solution would be to include Deinonychosaurus in the birds, says Louis Chiap. Problem solved! Just call the dinosaur a bird! <laughs> Look, you're welcome to believe that, just please don't call it science. I mean, what's, what's the next critter we're going to label as birds? Elephants? A couple of months back, an article entitled Dinosaur Petroglyphs at Kachina Bridge Site, Natural Bridges, National Monument, Southeastern Utah, Not Dinosaurs After All, appeared on the Paleontologia Electronica website by Phil Center and Sally Cole. The report allegedly debunks the famous Kachina Bridge petroglyph of a dinosaur. Now, it's interesting that the evolutionary community feels the need to explain away this petroglyph. The reasons are obvious. It's pretty hard to view this petroglyph as anything else but a dinosaur. Yet, Native Americans seeing dinosaurs would disqualify evolution and affirm the biblical account of creation and a young earth, whatever to do. Enter Center and Cole, 
who claimed that the petroglyph is actually a combination of two unconnected, meaningless petroglyphs and some mud stains. They claimed that close-up analysis of the petroglyph had never been done, which is patently false. There has been multiple creationists who have examined it up close. But Center and Cole have claimed to have gone to the site and performed close-up analysis of the petroglyph using zoom lenses and binoculars. Vance Nelson is one of those who had done close-up of analysis of the petroglyph and in his words, with all due respect, both of these devices, telephoto lenses and binoculars, are by definition for long distance viewing. Therefore, by definition, they never really did any close-up examination. Nelson had a very high-tech solution for genuine close-up analysis that apparently never crossed the minds of Centra or Cole. Bring a ladder. Just bring a ladder. <laughs> Nelson documented his response here and in a low-resolution version and a higher-resolution both available on the internet. Nelson's analysis of the Center Coal article is nothing less than a nuclear bomb of destruction to the claims of Center and Coal. Nelson simply shows that it is indeed one petroglyph of what sure looks like the Sinclair dinosaur, and there was no mud altering the appearance of said petroglyph. In fact, the Center Coal analysis is not only blown to smithereens, their analysis is an outright embarrassment to the evolutionary community. The comments on the BBC reforms reflect the speechlessness of the anti-creation community and the astonishment of onlookers. Quartus 45 wrote, On the basis of Nelson's comments, I would have to seriously question the accuracy of the latest article under debate. It seems to me that the only thing discredited is Center himself. But the Gachina Bridge petroglyph is only one of a very many examples of dinosaurs in ancient art that we find literally all over the world. Vance's book details dozens of fantastic, previously undescribed examples in a gorgeous, full-color coffee table book. I've been waiting literally for years to, for him to finish this book. It is well worth the wait. You can get a copy of his, of his book off his website right here. I highly, highly recommend it. Science Daily had a recent report on the reanalysis of the famous Laetoli fossil footprints in Tanzania, Africa. The tracks are allegedly 3.7 million years old, yet they are obviously those of completely modern humans. Now, while creationists have been saying from the get-go that the tracks are all completely human, it wasn't only the creationists. The discoverer of the footprints, Mary Leakey, had footprint expert Dr. Louise Robbins examine the trail. Robbins point promptly told Leakey that the footprints were that of a completely modern human. Even Tim White acknowledged that they were human, saying, Make no mistake about it, they are like modern human footprints. If one were left in the sand of a California beach today and a four-year-old were asked what it was, he would instantly say that somebody had walked there. He wouldn't be able to tell it from a hundred other prints on the beach, nor would you. It seems no one wanted to accept this analysis as fully bipedal humans were not supposed to have evolved for another two million years. Reanalysis of the tracks was carried out by scientists at the University of Liverpool, with the University of Manchester and Bournemouth University using computer analysis. Their conclusion? The footprints are identical to modern human footprints. In fact, Professor Robin Crompton of the University of Liverpool said, Quite remarkably, we found that some healthy humans produce footprints that are more like those of other apes than the Laetoli prints. The foot function represented by the prints is therefore most likely to be similar to patterns seen in modern humans. So, we have proof of completely modern humans and rocks dated by evolutionists as 3.7 million years old, right? The discussion that transpires is downright dizzying. To aid in a simulated debate, I have asked Captain Antagonator to join me from his secret lair. He will argue on behalf of the evolutionary view of the Laetoli footprints and will contend that they are the footprints of our ancient half-ape, half-man, hominid ancestors. Though it should be stated that the opinions made by the captain are his own and do not necessarily reflect the opinion of the average evolutionist. Welcome to the show, Captain. Well, your show is kind of pathetic. But the only bad publicity is no publicity, so I thought I'd make an appearance to mock you and your antics. Well, thanks. <laughs> Captain, aren't you excited by this find of completely modern human footprints in 3.7 million year old rock? 
We know that those are not human footprints because we do not find human fossils in rocks that old. Mm, you just did. Fossil human footprints. No, those cannot be human footprints. Why not? Because we do not find fossil human footprints in rocks that old. You just did. No, you are a simpleton who does not understand the complexities of paleontology. They cannot be fossil human footprints. Humans had not yet evolved at that time. How do you know? Because we only find remains from our ancient ape-like ancestors in rocks that old. But what about these fossil footprints? They must be from our ancient ape-like ancestors. But they're completely modern human footprints, and they don't match the feet of your ape-like ancestors. Only an idiot would believe that. They cannot be human footprints because the rocks they are in are too old. But they are completely modern human footprints, thus proving that humans were around at that time. How can you be so stupid and still host a webcast? You know, I can give you the number of a good doctor who could rent you a good brain for a day. Humans were not around 3.7 million years ago. That's a scientific fact. Winning! But these footprints are proof that humans were around at that time. Winning! Well, thank you, Captain Antagonator, for joining us on the program today and elevating my blood pressure. Elevated blood pressure, eh? I believe my work here is complete. Obviously, the evidence has absolutely nothing to do with the facts. The evidence is interpreted within the evolutionary construct and is thus not evidence for evolution. In fact, taken at face value, the Laetoli tracks are good evidence that the humans have remained unchanged and have not evolved. Ironically, some of the fossil human footprints in the Paluxy Riverbed, alongside dinosaur tracks, are of better quality than the Laetoli tracks. But of course, we know that these couldn't possibly be human footprints because the humans had not yet evolved at the time of the dinosaurs. Of course, I'm not going to mention the Lady of Guadalupe, a completely modern fossil human female skeleton found in rocks dated by the evolutionary community as 20 million years old. The Lady of Guadalupe was on display in the British Museum of Natural History for over 50 years until Darwinian evolution took over as the main paradigm. Because this skeleton refutes the idea of evolutionary change over time, that skeleton now sits in the basement of the British Museum of Natural History, never to see the light of day again. Geologist John Mackay visited the Lady of Guadalupe site on the island of Guadalupe and then paid a visit to Chris Stringer at the British Museum and asked Mr. Stringer how many fossil human bones that he knew of. Stringer replied with, oh, about 30,000. Have you seen any of these bones? I haven't. But of course, I'm not some kind of conspiracy nut to suggest that the evolutionists in ivory towers are, you know, hiding scientific evidence refuting evolution. Oh, no, no, no. That's it for this week's show. I'm your host, Ian Chuby. Join me next time for another exciting Genesis Week exclusive here on YouTube. And let us remember the words of Christ Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. See you on the flip side. Potential personnel.